Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Flankers bleed after months of peace. After more than a year of peace, bloody violence brought the community of Flankers in St. James on Thursday night as gunmen ambushed patrons at a shop, killing two men and injuring two others. The deceased have been identified as 34-year-old Bobby Campbell, the 18-year-old Omar Warren, both of Kodak Lane in the community. Council for the Montego Bay Northeast Division, which incorporates Flankers, Charles Sinclair told reporters that the committee had made significant strides over the recent years to turn its back on its troubled past with residents working to keep the peace. Of course, there is tension sometimes between the spaces, but persons appreciate it and just try to be civil and try to enjoy themselves within their respective space instead of committing mayhem, he said. When I just came here in the early years, we had 39 murders one year. We are down to some years when we have none. This year, there was only one, now we've increased it by the number to three. Sinclair added labeling the Thursday night attack as a backward step for the community. He said that he and other members of the political directorate will be working closely with the families of the victims and other residents to restore calm in the area. According to reports, Campbell and Warren were among a group of persons at a shop along Kodak Lane about 10.50 p.m. when they were ambushed by armed men. The assailant shot Campbell and Warren as well as Campbell's relative, who operates the shop, and a 39-year-old fisherman before escaping in a waiting motor car. The police were summoned, and upon arrival, all four victims were discovered suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. They were transported to a medical facility, where Campbell and Warren were pronounced dead. Warren's mother, Rosalind James, was overcome with emotions as she mourned the death of her teenage son when reporters visited the community on Friday. My son is not a bad person. Him just act like him a one little child. You understand? Them just come and me no know. Me no know if me can just look for me bikini, she said. Me no know how me a go manage. How me a go get over it. I do every minute me and him in an argument, but the argument is just to sweep up the yard and wash the clothes them, James said. Campbell's mother, Pauline Simpson, said that she believes that everyone liked her son because although he was very arrogant, he is very easy to like. You have to know him, to approach him, and know to talk to him and them things there, and him is a party-going person. Everything in the community, him is there, she said. Yesterday, me talked to him on the step. Me said to him, say, Bobby, you need to watch your talking. Watch how you walk a road. Check yourself and watch yourself, Simpson added. The distraught mother said she saw a tragic event coming her son's way from a long time ago. Following the shooting incident, the police and members of the Jamaica Defense Force Step up patrols in and around the area. I don't like to let down people building, says Prime Minister. Prime Minister on Johannes on Friday said that his administration has a master plan for 15,000 housing solutions on lands located in the vicinity of Clifton in St. Catherine, a day after the government moved to bulldoze unfinished structures in an unauthorized section. The demolition exercise caused severe stress and anguish for many home hopefuls some of whom had reportedly paid huge sum of money to unscrupulous persons for lots, believing the properties were being sold legitimately. This community and this era is about to experience a transformation, Holness said, as he toured the era on Friday and met with Peave residents following the demolition of 10 of 30 unfinished houses that were marked for destruction. He told residents that some lands have been made available for affordable housing, while the Housing Agency of Jamaica and National Housing Trust will develop. He added that people would have the option to acquire a parcel of land or a starter unit or a full unit, pointing out that the government has been modeling its target prices with the newly St. Catherine Estate Development, which has units starting at $6.5 million. Holness told the Clifton residents that SCJ Holding Limited, the state entity owning the lands, have subdivisioned the area that were currently occupied and now has a program to regularize the community. He said the agency currently has status ready for distribution to persons who are part of the original Clifton settlement. Having toured the era, I noticed that work has to be done on roads. We will seek to do a few of them, but we can't do all of them right away. I will be talking to the SCG to see what we can do to at least get the main roads improved. The Prime Minister added that the community, which already has electricity and irregular water supply, will be connected to the water supply that is already being developed for the area. Likewise, a sewage system will be connected to the treatment plant now being developed in the area. He said the government has acknowledged Clifton as a legitimate community and will protect the residents' property rights. Addressing the illegal occupation of lands 
on the outskirts of the community holding his child, those who sought to occupy the land illegally. I will tell you this, and I am sharing from my heart, I am a builder. I don't like to let down people build in. All I have been telling people is to build, but we cannot build illegally, the Prime Minister stressed. For persons looking on, they might say, give them a break, but if we continue doing that, it will break down law and order. He said that the SCG was now in the process of verifying boundaries, noting that after the severe, there will have to be the adjustment to boundaries, where roads will have to be put in and some houses will have to be relocated. According to Holness, the demolition process was suspended on Thursday to allow for persons who are not on the list for titles to work out their status with the SCG. He expressed fears that news reports alluding to criminal elements selling lands in Clifton would have caused the community to be stigmatized, adding that the residents were hardworking. I want the public to know that this is not the case. This community started with sugar workers who occupied the lands and would have some rights to the land, he said on Friday. In a statement to Parliament on Wednesday, Hone said that criminals were behind the unplanned development located close to Clifton. We will not allow criminal gangs to create communities in this country, he said as he informed his fellow parliamentarians of the plan to demolish exercise for Thursday. It is the first time that an illegal settlement sponsored by a criminal gang will be treated with. I want this to be an example and a warning and caution to Jamaicans, he told the House. He said that the unfinished houses near Clifton were demolished because they were on agricultural lands. Those in the right location, with a decking or roof, will be allowed to remain if persons can show proof of position and work out arrangement with the SCG, he added. They would, however, have to pay more money to finalize ownership of the land they now occupied. The opposition People's National Party tried the government for the demolition exercise, expressing concern over the matter in which the government handled the issue. This incident highlights the challenge that many Jamaicans have in land ownership, not because they want to break the law but simply their quest to become landowners, said Senator Sophia Fraser Brains. The opposition spokesperson on land calling on the government to make it easier for Jamaicans to own properties legitimately. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification bell.